Today's video is going to be all about owning a herd of guinea pigs. So as you probably know, I do own nine guinea pigs. I have eight females and one neutered male. And I just wanted to talk to you about what it's like to own a herd of guinea pigs because I know that the majority of you probably have maybe two guinea pigs, maybe a couple more. And it's probably not very common to have the amount I do. And I know quite a few of you do have the amount I do or quite a lot of guinea pigs, but I know probably the majority will have a smaller group or just a pair. So I just want to talk to you about what it's like to own a larger herd and just talk through the advantages and disadvantages. So first I'm going to talk about why we have a herd of guinea pigs and it basically started off, I just had two females which didn't get along very well so then we introduced another female and there was still a lot of bickering they wouldn't really cuddle up, they didn't have a great connection or bond so what we had to do was we were like oh we can't just keep introducing females but again we went to a rescue and we went to go and get another female or we intended to and then we came home with a new male which was completely unexpected I didn't even know anything about it I hadn't done any research into neutered males, I didn't know how they would make a difference into a group of females but the difference was incredible and I've had so many questions about not just male guinea pigs because I know a lot of you think that it's only the males that really fight but females can fight and I am telling you this from experience they can be just as aggressive as males just because they are females doesn't mean to say that they can't be as aggressive or they can't fight with each other because they can it's just probably not as well known with the females they tend to bicker a lot more and they don't tend to do i think what the boars do is they put it all on for show to make them look the most highest up in the hierarchy so they will use body language and different sounds to make that come across and the females do do this but probably not as much on a bigger scale. In my experience they just bicker a lot as a group of females and they can live happily it's just some don't and I know a lot of you will have guinea pigs which get along really well in pairs or small groups or single sex groups which is absolutely great and if you do then that's really great if they're happy together then there's no need to change anything. So we then introduce this male to our group of three females at home and it was amazing the difference that he made. You wouldn't think that adding a neutered male would make such a difference but honestly it completely changed them. They went from bickering all the time and not really getting along. They would tolerate each other but they didn't really get along as I wanted them to and then after a few weeks of introducing them to the new neutered male the way they got along was so amazing. They would snuggle up to each other all the time. I think it's because they were able to sort out the order of the hierarchy. There was a lot of confusion of which pig was where and they all wanted to be at the top really. And that is a very common problem. So having a neutered boar seems to sort the hierarchy out and makes it a lot easier for them to get along. And I've had two different neutered males in separate female groups and it just changes them completely. So unfortunately the first neutered male that we got passed away which is why we then neutered Bramley to live with our group of females. So we just kept adding on guinea pigs because we fell in love with them and I just absolutely love owning them as pets. So then we just kept getting more and more and more. It was just really great to see the way they interact and I think having a herd like this is more like what they would have in a wild because they live in similar groups to this so having a bar and several females is really great to replicate what they would have in nature but I'm not saying oh you have to have a neutered male and everything if you have males or females that get along they're absolutely brilliant and there is no need to change anything this video isn't saying you need to get a neutered male or whatever it's just so great if your guinea pigs get along. And I get asked this question so many times of what do I do? My two females are fighting, my males are fighting, what do I do? It's very dependent on the individual situation. Now I know a lot of you are not able to have a neutered boar because of where you live or there's none locally in rescues. If you're in the situation where you have, for instance, 
a couple of females which are not getting along and you don't want to do about it I would highly recommend if you can introducing a neutered male just because of seeing how my guinea pigs have changed and it's just been one of the best things we've done for them and I'm so happy that we went ahead and neutered Bramley because it made such a big difference to the females. They now get along as one happy herd. That's not to say they don't have their occasional times where they will bicker and fall out because it still happens, it's natural for that to happen but it's so much less frequent. Having a lot of guinea pigs in a group gives them choice of who they want to be with. They're not restricted just to living with one other guinea pig. And going back to what I was saying before, if you've got guinea pigs that get along really well in a smaller group, then you, there's no need to change anything at all. You're doing really great. I also feel as though guinea pigs are a lot more interesting in a larger group because having just a couple of guinea pigs, like sometimes you will get really interesting guinea pigs and if you can set up a nice spacious enclosure for them then even having just two is very interesting to watch but I feel as though when you have more guinea pigs in a group it is so much more interesting to see all of the guinea pigs come together and interact because there's so many of them and there's always something going along. Now I'm going to talk about some things you might want to consider before getting a herd of guinea pigs. As great as it is to have so many guinea pigs, it's not always the best option depending on your situation of where you live, how much space you have etc. It's recommended to have one meter squared of space per guinea pig. So if you have, for example, nine guinea pigs like I do then you want an enclosure which is nine meters squared or even more. I think that the shed I have is probably about just nine meters squared but with the outdoor enclosure it's so much more space so in the warm months they have loads of space and I think in the winter they're not going to come out much anyway so it's not as much of a problem but the more space you can provide the better. If space is an issue for you then it's maybe not the best idea to have a lot of guinea pigs and I really like to get my guinea pigs in the outdoor enclosure that they have because again it's creating that natural habitat and then you really do get to see the natural behaviour especially as they will display it when placed in a more natural environment. It's all just down to preference. Personally I like my guinea pigs to live a more natural lifestyle but that's just me and some people prefer to keep them in CNC cages and homemade cages and that's all great it's just depending on your situation, how much space you have. Obviously each time you're getting another guinea pig that's adding on to potential vet bills but you could have a guinea pig which has several health problems in its lifetime and yet you could have 10 guinea pigs and only a small minority of them have any problems. So it's really down to luck I guess and it's quite unlucky if you have just one guinea pig and you've had all these problems. Not that you should have one guinea pig anyway, just to put that out there. Obviously you're going to have to face more illnesses, it's more likely more of them are going to pass away. So you've got to be able to deal with this and it's very hard but you've just got to carry on for the sake of the other guinea pigs. You've got to keep going and I feel like with animals, you, as hard as it gets, you've just got to keep going. And it is so upsetting when one of them passes away, especially as it can affect the group in many ways, but you just got to keep going and be that sort of person. And obviously the more guinea pigs you have, the more times you're going to have to go through that. Guinea pig supplies will be more expensive. You're going to be going through a lot more bedding, including the wood shavings or whatever substrate you use to bed them down on. You've got straw in winter if you use straw, hay of course because that's essential. You've got possibly the pellets that you feed them, fruits and vegetables and all of this is adding up and it's going to make guinea pigs more expensive because the more you have, the more they'll eat, the more they will wee and poo so the more you have to clean them out and it does add on to the price so that's a really big consideration and it is expensive, I'm not going to lie and you don't have to be rich to own guinea pigs and I know a lot of the time people are saying oh you're so rich but we're actually not, it's just it, it's all down to what people spend their money on and we don't go on holiday anymore and stuff like that. We just choose to spend our money on other things and I'm very grateful that my parents choose to spend a lot of the money on my pets. I'm really grateful for that because it means I can give them the life that I really want them to have and I just don't like having pets if I can't give them a really good life which is... Just, I think that's part of down to my personality. I just want to give them the best that they can have and I won't be happy until they have that. So 
I just want it because I'm passionate and I just want them to have the best lifestyle and I feel as though the things that I give them is all for their benefit, not just because we're wasting money or whatever. So it is a big commitment. I probably spend about an hour in total caring for my guinea pigs in a day. That's just a rough estimate. It very much varies depending on what I'm doing, but it can take me a long time to clean them out. Most days I'm just scooping out the soil bedding from the hutch, which does not really take that long. Other days I will have to clean the hutch and the other area, but I don't mind because it's my hobby, I enjoy it, I love looking after my guinea pigs. It's just down to how much time you're willing to give to them. A lot of people ask me how I have time to look after all my pets because obviously I do have quite a lot of pets. And it's all down to passion I think, and if you're really passionate about something, you'll make the time for it because you want to. Whereas if you're not motivated for something, then you're not going to make the time for it. So you must be motivated to have a lot of guinea pigs because you've got to do this every day. It's a routine and you can't just say, oh, I don't feel like doing it one day. You've just got to keep at it. This is what you're letting yourself into, really. I think it's such a great hobby to have. I absolutely love it. I don't regret it one bit. I can't really imagine myself without any guinea pigs. I think I would be owning them forever, basically. I would really encourage, if you are able to, to own a herd of guinea pigs. And this is not being false, but I don't want to be false at all. I'm just saying, if you can and you want to, then go ahead. It's such a great thing to do. And I'm just trying to persuade you that if you are able to and you want to, then there's nothing to stop you. And it's such a great thing to do. So I hope that you found this video helpful. And I know that not all of you will want a herd of guinea pigs, that's absolutely fine, there's nothing wrong with that at all. I just want to encourage those of you who have thought about it and have considered going ahead with it to maybe pursue this because it is really great and I'm happy to help any of you who want advice about this. You can send me a direct message on Instagram, you could Snapchat me, you can leave comments. I am generally most active on Snapchat, I do tend to apply to everyone's Snapchats. Instagram, I'm a bit, it can take me a while, but generally I will get them all replied to. It can take a few weeks sometimes, other times I'll reply the same day, just depends how much time I've got. With YouTube comments, I tend to scan through them all, and if there's any which I feel are particularly important to reply to, I reply to them. So probably your best bet is Snapchat, maybe Instagram too and possibly YouTube comments if you prefer. So I will try to get back to you and help you. All I will say is if you email me, it will probably take me months to get back because I am so slack with emails. I always just take forever to reply to an email. So if you don't want a slow reply, then please don't email me. So thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye guys.